One of those friends told us in an exclusive interview that he talked with the wrestler just before the tragedy and says he was calm and friendly. Fox Live's Doug Evans is here now with our top story. Doug? Well, just three months ago, Chris and Nancy Benoit were making a decision on where their son Daniel would attend private school. They turned to their close friend James Robison for advice. James introduced them to Reverend George Dillard in Peachtree City. Both men told us today that in their relationships and their friendships and the private counseling sessions, there were no signs of trouble. The last I saw of her it was, you know, hey, Nancy, you know, let's, let's keep that 4th of July open. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'll give you a call. And I uh, waved down to Daniel, said, see you later, buddy. And those are just the last memories I have of those two right there. James Robinson doesn't really know what to do with himself today. He spent so many July 4th with his close friends Chris and Nancy Benoit, and even his last conversations with the couple were about their plans for today. He said, I'm heading out on the road. I'll be back and you know, talk to you when I get back in town. And I analyzed that conversation over and over, and there was nothing strange, nothing peculiar about it. It was just the typical conversation we would have. We talked with James Robison and Pastor George Dillard at the Peachtree City Christian Church where Nancy had been attending services for the last three months with her son Daniel. And where Reverend Dillard had been counseling the couple, not marriage counseling, he says, but spiritual guidance. As a pastor, you, uh, you can tell when somebody's interested and, and when they're not. And Nancy had that, uh, that look in her eyes that, that every Every word, uh, you know, she was hanging on, and, and she, was, she was listening, and she had, she had questions, but they were good questions. And, uh, yeah, I just, I, I, I just uh, am so thankful uh, that James introduced me to them. Both men are at a loss and say in their friendships and deep personal conversations, there were no clues, no warnings of the turmoil to come. It's not the Chris that I loved. It's not that same person. Something happened I don't know. And I don't know that anyone will ever know the truth. But that's just something the friend of mine for almost eight years could not have done. Both men say the couple were deeply private. He was a kind, caring person. He loved Nancy and Daniel with all his heart. And one of the last times Nancy came to the church, she asked Reverend Dillard to pray over a silver cross she had bought for Chris's birthday. She wanted, uh, she wanted it to be a perfect gift for Chris because she was so, she was so happy about where where he was heading uh, in his spiritual life and uh, uh, the the questions that that he was asking and the and uh, and the things that that he was showing interest in. They were great parents, and I love Nancy and da and Daniel and Chris with all my heart, and I'll miss them. I'll miss them dearly. James says there were countless times where Chris met with children in need and signed autographs and brought gifts, and he preferred that such events were low-key and without publicity. We've got more of this interview on MyFoxAtlanta.com. You'll have access to the full interview a little later on tonight. Lisa? Doug, thanks.